Uh, as you remember, we were in the memory elements section. It was our uh, topic number six, I guess. Uh, in the memory elements, we have talked about uh, D-latch, then going to uh, master slave latch, then going to the clocked latch, then we, talk, we talked about uh, D flip-flop, we talked about JK flip-flop, we talked about T flip-flop. So you got familiar with the basic memory elements and these elements are the constructing elements of a sequential circuit. For, a, for designing a sequential circuit, you need these basic elements. In the next section, topic number seven, and I guess it could be the, our last topic, we will t talk about sequential components as we talked about combinational components. So after finishing memory elements, which would be in five minutes, then we go back to combinational components because we left it somewhere to, to, uh, to see some of the memory elements for your lab. And now we will, back, we will go back to components, combinational components, and after that we go to sequential components, and that would be at the end of our course. So last time we talked about counter. Actually, counter could be discussed in sequential components in the next topic. But since we have talked about T flip flop, I thought that it could be, it, it's good that we just mention it here and again bring it there in the sequential components that you have this component uh, inside your bag, your bag of components, the library of sequential components that you could use for building your circuit. So we uh, talked about two, uh, two designs. The first one, was uh, asynchronous. And if you remember, we try to look at here, we uh, connected Q of the first flip-flop to the clock of to the next. You see? Everybody pay attention. Okay? Why? Because if you look at here, when Q0 from 1 goes to 0. At that time, we want Q1 becomes 1. So this would be a good design. When Q0 from 1 goes to 0, and as you could see here, please pay attention, it is a falling edge flip-flop, a falling edge. When Q0 becomes, from 1 becomes 0, this falling edge happens. So let me, let me give you the timing diagram of this. <coughs> so we have a clock, clock. And then at the falling edge of the clock, let's say we are at the beginning of a counter. So everything is zero. Q0, Q1, Q2, Q3, they are all zero. And we have one at D input. So these are uh, at T input. These are T flip-flops. We have one. So if the clock comes, the flip-flop toggles. If the, the clock comes, because the input is one, the flip-flop toggles. So the first clock is coming. The first clock, the first falling edge is coming. Therefore, the Q becomes, Q0 become, was zero, so it becomes one. And please look at here. I put one with a delay. 
So there is a delay after the clock because it is not instantaneous. When we have the falling edge of the clock, there would be a delay here. Okay, so that's it. Then the clock goes here. Again, here we have the next falling edge. At this next falling edge, <coughs> Q0 toggles. So Q0 toggles here. And again, there is a delay. So Q0 toggles later, later than the falling edge, not at the same time. Maybe, let's say, three nanoseconds later. And here, look at here now. The Q, Q0 connected to clock of the Q1, the, the next flip-flop. And here we have a falling edge. So let me put this falling edge with orange. Since we have a falling edge here, so the T flip-flop, T flip-flop of Q1 toggles. Up to now, Q1 was zero. Now it toggles. And again, please look, here we have a delay. And also we had a delay here. We had a delay here. And as you could see, these delays are accumulated. At, if, if you now look at the distance between the falling edge of clock with Q1, with the change of Q, Q1, it is two delays, not just one. Okay, let's continue. Now we continue, the clock goes, and here we have another falling edge. So here we have another falling edge. At this time, again, Q, Q0 toggles. Q0 toggles with a delay. But as you could see, Q0, it was zero, it became one, and it doesn't change anything for this flip-flop, because this flip-flop, the second one, has a falling edge triggered flip-flop. So it doesn't change anything. So let's continue. The next falling edge of the clock is here. Here again, we have Q0 toggled. So Q0 becomes zero. Here, when Q0 becomes zero, then we have a falling edge here. A falling edge for this flip-flop, for this flip-flop. And this will make this flip-flop toggles. And now again, Q1 toggles. Q1 was one, now it toggles and becomes zero. Of course, with a delay. Now look at Q1. Q1 became zero from one. And it is connected to, let me put blue here. So it is connected to blue, blue, blue here. It is connected to clock of Q2. Now we have a falling edge here in the clock of Q2. Q2. So it changed, it toggles Q2. Q2 was zero up to now. At this time, it becomes one. You see, it works. So at this time, we had, look at here, we had zero, zero, zero. Then we had a clock, it became zero, zero, one. Then we had a clock, it became zero, zero, Okay, it's because of the delay, I have to put it here. Zero, one, zero. Then we have a clock, it became zero, one, one. Then we have a clock, it became uh, one, a clock is here, it became one, 
zero, zero. You see, it's, it's counting. Zero, 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 one, zero, one, zero, zero, one, 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 zero, zero, and we can continue that for the Q3 also. We have four bits here, and you could continue like that. So the point here is that this delay, it's getting accumulated in every flip-flop that we have. Look at the delay here. So now the delay is this, from the rising edge to this one. And it is getting more and more. So this is not good. At, at some point, it is not good, because with the falling edge of the clock, we would like the changes happen at that time at most with a specified delay, for example, three nanoseconds. But now it doesn't happen that it, it, the first one, three nanoseconds, the second one, six nanoseconds, the, the third one, the second one, third one is nine nanoseconds, the, the next one is 12 nanoseconds delay after the clock, clock. So it's not good. So, but it is asynchronous, and because of that, we call it asynchronous counter. It is an asynchronous counter. It doesn't change at the right at the edge of the clock. It changes differently with these delays. Ne next, we gave you another design with for, for for synchronous design. For this synchronous design, we looked at the design, and I told you that if you look at if you look at the change of Q1, 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 when, when does Q1 change? The Q1 is changing here, Q1 is changing here, and so on. When we look at the change of Q2, Q2 with a different color, Q2, Q2 is Q2, it's changing here, is changing here, Q2. Q2 is toggling here at this time, and here. This, this is the change of Q2. Q3, Q3 is changing Q3. Where is Q3? Here. It changes at this point, zero becomes one, and one becomes zero. So let me complete Q1 also. Q1 is changing here, here, uh, here, and this one. So if you look at the changes, when when the change, the toggle happens, if we look at Q1, Q1 changes when there is, when Q0 is 1. Look at here, Q0 is 1, Q0 is 1 at that time, Q0 is 1, Q0 is 1, and so on. If we look at Q, uh, Q2, Q2 with the orange color. Q2, Q2 change happens when Q0 and Q1 are both one. Q0 and Q1 are both one. Q0 and Q1 are both one, and when this and this time. If you look at Q3, Q3 changes happen when Q0, Q1, and Q2, all of these three are one, this time and this time. So it will give us the idea of how to design, how, what to connect to T of each flip-flop. So for the first flip-flop, we just connect one to it, or better, we can connect enable to it. If enable is one, it means that this counter counts. If enable is zero, then 
T flip flop doesn't do anything, nothing is counting. So we connect enable to the first one. But for the second one, we have to connect Q, Q1, Q, Q0, when Q0 is 1. So the, the output of Q0 and with the enable that we had goes to the T flip flop of the Q1. Then the output of Q1 with the AND of Q0 and enable, which is this one, goes to T of the Q2. And then the output of Q2 will be ANDed with the previous AND that we had. It goes to here and so on. And also with this design, look at here, we have built a cascadable counter. If you have this and you connect it to the next set of flip-flops exactly like this, you would have an 8-bit counter. But for that, you have to connect this to the T of the next session, of the next uh, counter. Okay, let me, let me show you. We have a counter. So we built a 4-bit counter. It had an enable. It had an enable, it had a clock, a falling edge. Okay, in this design, the clock could be positive edge or negative edge. It doesn't matter. Both of them works. But for the, neg for the previous design, the clock should be falling edge to work because Q from 1 becomes 0. So that design. But here, clock could be for example, positive edge. So we have a clock. And then this counter has four outputs. Q0, Q1, Q2, Q3. And it has an output, we call it next. Or we can call it carry out. Carry out or next. If we have another a component like this so I would put another component exactly the same it has enable it has clock and it has four outputs and it has next so look at here if I connect what should I do? How to cascade these two? Tell me. The next two, enable. Clock is clock. Okay, let me show you. The clock is synchron. So we should connect next to enable. And all of the clocks are connected to our clock. We have one clock for all of them. And this is the synchronous design. When clock changes, all of the eight Q, these, these are Qs. They are changing, actually with a delay, with a specific delay. But all of them are changing at the edge of the clock. Now we have built an eight-bit counter. This counter starts from zero, goes to 255, and then the next clock becomes zero. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, up to 255, because it's an 8-bit counter, and then again 0. This clock, this counter was 4-bit, only 4-bit. It was uh, counting from 0 to 15, and then again 0, 1, 2, 2, 15, 0, 1, 2. When we cascaded these two together, we have built, a, uh, we have built an 8-bit counter. 8-bit counter from 0 to 255 and then again 0. You can put another component like that and then you would have a 12-bit counter. Yes? So in this case, the enable just recovers going to zero, and in this case, the clock edge that determines the counter? Enab enable also uh, determines if it works or not. If the enable is 0, then nothing changes. But, but if enable is 1, 
at every clock cycle, you have a count. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So this is the counter, OK? OK, okay I guess we have uh, finished the memory elements. We have talked about SR latch. We have talked about D latch, master slide flip-flop, D flip-flop, yes? If if you are it it it's we can see it from the symbol, this symbol here, here, it has only a triangle, so it means that it is rising edge. If it has a circle also here, something like that, like this, like this, you have a circle here, okay? Then it is falling edge. Uh, here. Look at here here. You see, there is a circle. No? Sorry. Uh, okay, I, I will show you with laser. Where is laser, 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 pointer? Okay, uh, here. Here, you see, this is the clock, okay? And this clock has a triangle. It means edge, and it has a circle at the bottom, so it means falling edge. But, for example, this clock. This clock, it has a triangle, it means edge, but it doesn't have the circle, so it is rising edge. So based on the symbol, we know that it is rising edge or falling edge. Uh, we talked about circle before. Circle is not, is inverter. So whenever you have a circle, it means uh, active low. And when it is with the edge, it means falling edge. Okay? So we talked about SR latch, D latch, master slave flip flop, D flip flop, JK flip flop, T flip flop, and edge trigger D flip flop, which was very important, I guess, and this is almost the basic of the uh, sequential elements, sequential uh, circuits that we get. And then we talked about counters. Here, we are finishing uh, memory elements. Uh, the next chapter would be sequential components, but since we left something in the combinational, uh, combinational components, we go there and then come back to sequential components.